We're talking technology and gadgets, etc. This afternoon with Gadget Guy Dave Matthews. When I got XP on my new computer, you told me the first thing I should do is get in touch with Microsoft, log on to Microsoft, mm -hmm. and, and get the latest patches and updates and security. Is That's that right. anything about what we're talking about right um, now? That, that is very essential. Since uh, Windows 98, there's been a process called Windows Update, and it's, it's a button on the start menu, actually. Yeah, they, want you to, they want you to use it. Yeah. And what this does is it updates all the vulnerabilities. Like recently, there's been a vulnerability to Microsoft's Messenger, their instant message client, where people could, again, take over and, and, and drone your computer. And there's patches for the browser. There's patches for all sorts of security. And this Windows update's the best way to keep everything up to date. But there's some preventative maintenance you can do as well. And that's through two different programs. And these are software firewalls. And I love these because they give you instant gratification. You can get onto the internet right now. You can go to zonealarm.com and you can download a free uh, firewall, which is unique because this will actually monitor the traffic that goes not only in but out of your computer. And once you've installed Zone Alarm, you, as you run your your uh, your uh, browser, your email client, your anything, your chat, your AOL Instant Messenger, mm -hmm. you tell it to allow for for data to go out through the firewall. Okay. So basically, you're approving applications that can go out and you're approving applications that can come back in through your internet connection. And this is, uh, it works if you have either a modem or a broadband Does it connection. it slow it down significantly? It doesn't, once you, all you, it slows you down the first time because you have to approve every bit of data that goes out mm -hmm. to the world and you have to approve every bit that comes back in. But once you've set up those applications, it allows a free pass of data throughout. And what's neat is you can find out which programs might be spyware and lurking in the back of your system trying to connect to the internet, connect to a server, and like Windows uh, Media Player, when you played a DVD in your computer, it was keeping a log of every DVD that you played in your machine. Now, Windows really? has since created a patch. They realized that was a security issue, especially some of the DVDs that you probably play. <laughs> <laughs> so they have we, discontinued that. We've got a call from El Paso on the line. It's Jonathan with a computer question. Hi, Jonathan. Thank you for calling in. Go ahead with your question, Jonathan. Hello. Hi. Um, I've got a question for my computer. Go hey. for it. I had this um, virus program, it's called Norton, and it says I have 319 viruses sitting on my computer and they're all under quarantine. Okay, well probably, yeah. probably what those is, is viruses can arrive several ways. It can arrive via email. Well, yeah, I know how I get them and everything, uh -huh. and I know like how to quarantine them. I just can't get them off the computer, because okay. when I try to delete them, it will take it out of quarantine, and then the virus will take effect and destroy my computer, which I don't want. What well, do? you, can, you can delete it through the Norton program, and there is a delete function. And with email, it's very tricky because when you delete email, it only goes to a deleted folder. It really isn't deleted. So trying to delete these viruses could be a multi-step process. And sometimes you can't do it within Windows. Sometimes you have to boot off of a, a DOS disk or boot off the Norton CD-ROM. I've been in that situation before and it's told me if you do delete this, mm -hmm. you're going to also delete important things that on is, your computer. That is a potential problem as well. Sometimes if it's unable to repair the infected area, you'll, you might have to delete the file and you could lose documents or you could lose critical Windows files. That's why it's best to really read the fine print when it's going through and deleting those files and make sure that uh, you have backup files, obviously, of your, yeah. your I'm a bad software. fine print reader when it comes to computers. <laughs> Another call from El Paso. Here's Raul. Go ahead, Raul. Um, yes, sir. I just barely got a computer. And I don't know how to use my webcam to send pictures to people. Like, I want to send emails to my sister in Japan, and I don't know how to send a webcam pictures. Mm -hmm. Webcam advice yeah. for Raul? When, uh, Michael had this problem. Yeah. Once, once you get the webcam installed, you have to have the correct drivers in right. order for Windows to see the webcam. Now, Windows 98, Windows XP, uh, Windows 2000, they come with a program called NetMeeting. And if you want to run this, just click Start, Run, and type CONF, which stands for Conference. And start, that, Run, CONF. CONF. Okay. And press Enter, and it'll run this NetMeeting video conferencing utility. Really? And it's, uh, it's built in. They've hidden it in XP because they want you to use the Windows Messenger. But this will show you that your camera's working, and what this allows is a real-time, face-to-face conversation. In order to do video email, you need a third-party program. And iVista has a video email program that you can run. Basically, it, it takes your, your face, it makes it into a little movie, it encapsulates it up and sends it via email. But watch how long you make that movie for. Because if your friends have a slow speed connection, they're going to hate you. They're going to hate you. Good stuff, good calls. Gadget Guy Dave Matthews. Good to see you. Thanks, Thanks for, for having me. Being here today.